So we finished one, we got the parent um, genotypes for the cross. We finished two, we filled out the Punnett square. Now we move on to step three. Using the information contained in the completed Punnett square, we next determine the expected F1 genotype frequencies. Okay, how do we do that? We're going to create a list of unique genotypes that tracks how many times each one appears in the Punnett square. So for each square, we're going to process them in order. For each square, if its genotype is not already in the list, then add the genotype to the list and assign a count of 1 to it. If the genotype is already in the list, then increment its count by 1. So we start with this first one. Big T, big T, big V, big V. We check for our genotypes. Does it exist in our genotype list yet? Well, no. So we add it. Big T, big T, big V, big V, and we assign it a count of 1. That occurs one time in the Punnett square so far. Then we move over to the next square. Big T, big T, big V, little v. Come over here. Does that exist in our genotype list? No. So we add it and assign a value, a count of 1 to it. Move over to the next one. Big T, little t, big V, big V. Does that exist in our genotype list? No. So we add it and we assign a count of 1. We go over to the fourth column in the first row, big T, little t, big V, little v. Does that exist in our genotype list? No. We add it and we assign a count of one. Now we drop down to the second row, start at the first uh, column, big T, big T, big V, little v. Does that exist in our list? Well, yes, it does, right here. So we don't add it to the list. All we do is we find it within the list and increment its count by one. These are slashes. That doesn't mean 11, that means two two slashes. And we would continue, I won't show this for every square again, I won't go through the explanation for each square, but you do it the same thing for each square. That already existed. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. Big T, little t, big T, little t, big V, little v, big V, little v. So that already exists in our list, so we found it and incremented its count by one. And we continue this square by square, either adding it into the list and assigning a count of one, or finding it and incrementing its count by one. And after we've processed all 16 squares, there are our genotype counts, our, geno our unique genotypes and their counts. Next, we're going to convert these genotype counts into fractions that represent the genotype frequencies. Your instructor may prefer that you then convert each fraction into either a decimal representation or a percentage, but for this, we're going to stick with fractions. Okay, there are 16 squares. One of those is big T, big T, big V, big V. So 1 out of 16 is big T, big T, big V, uh, big V. So what we do is look at these counts and put them over 16. There's two. This occurred two times in the table. So big T, big T, big V, little V occurs two sixteenths of the time. That had two, two sixteenths. This occurred four times in the table. Big T, little T, big V, little V. So its frequency is four sixteenths. And we do that for each one of these simply taking its count and putting it over 16, since that's how many squares we filled out. Now we're done with the genotype frequencies. We're halfway done the problem. The problem asks for the expected genotype frequencies and the expected phenotype frequencies. Well, we now have the expected genotype frequencies. This list right here, there are the genotypes, there are their expected frequencies. 